What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So we're gonna check out 99 problems in AEW in 13 minutes by Age of Wrestling. If you haven't already subscribed to Age of Wrestling, go give him a subscription. I saw this in my recommended uh, feed, and I thought this would be very interesting because there's been a lot of stuff that's been going on with AEW, and not all of it has been positive. Uh, I've even seen uh, quite a bit of hardcore AEW fans not liking where the product is heading and what they're seeing on their, uh, on television on the weekly episodic shows, and uh, even the attendance has been dropping on all their shows not just dynamite but collision and obviously rampage has been kind of declining for a long time so their attendance uh numbers haven't been good people haven't been a fan of what's been going on storyline wise hell it doesn't even seem like edge is a big deal as he should be you know since he just signed with the company not too long ago well he goes by adam copeland uh, now but still you know he it's like his his like hype train has died off very quickly so i don't know we're gonna check this out see what he has to say appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on channel let's get right into this one man because his presence does very little no, no. to sell one Signing Edge to AEW was not a great decision because his presence does very little to sell tickets or boost the ratings. 2. Signing Ric Flair to AEW in a multi-year deal doesn't make any sense considering he's almost 75 years old. This makes no sense. The first one, that's a little subjective. I'm okay with them signing him. I just feel like the booking has to make sense and they have to keep that momentum. They haven't been able to keep that momentum as, as I would have thought. But signing Ric Flair what the fuck for a multi multi-year deal what are we doing i get it tony you're you're a fan of rick flair you're a fan of these legends but no no and apparently he's been approved to have um in ring matches and wrestling bumps what are we doing what are we doing man? old and brings very little value to the product it also doesn't help that he has a very shady past three Tony Khan chastised Vince McMahon for being a sexual abuser, but then signs Ric Flair, who also has been honored as a sexual abuser, to AEW. This mm. is selective morality. 4. Tony Khan banned Hulk Hogan from AEW due to his racist past, but then allows Sabu to be on AEW TV, even though he has said some very racist things. Huh. 5. Allowing Paul White to be a physical threat on AEW doesn't make sense because the man can barely move anymore. He looks like he's permanently doing the stanky leg. I did see that. I don't, I'm going to be honest with you. I appreciate what Big Show has done. But once again, Tony's letting his fandom get a hold of his actual, I guess, booking side of logical, making anything make sense side of things. Like, he he does look like he can barely walk out there. I don't think he needs to be out there. That's just my personal opinion. But... Tony Khan loves his toys, his wrestling toys. 6. Signing Jeff Hardy to AEW was not the greatest move. He has proved to be more of a liability through his DUI arrest, and he doesn't move the needle like how he used to. 7. Over That's a very interesting point. I, I get what he's saying there. For some people, they feel like he shouldn't be there. He hasn't had any incidents yet as of late, and hopefully he can stay that way, but I get why he would say that. I understand on older stars is a common thing in AEW as there's yeah. a constant presence and emphasis on stars that are over 50 years old. Yeah. 8. Letting CM Punk go was a big mistake as ratings are now low and AEW is struggling to sell tickets. 9. Eight. Whether some of y'all want to admit it or not, some of y'all feel like he didn't move the needle. He moved it enough. I will say that. They, them letting him go, granted he plays a part into that, that... That definitely hurt them for sure. It definitely hurt them. You can't say it didn't. It did. It definitely hurt them for future matches. Hell, Collision is, it's not a, it's, it, it doesn't have that same identity because he's not even there. They built the show around him, so. AEW is very disorganized, as seen with them not having a ride ready for their biggest star, CM Punk, for All in London, forcing him to find his way to the stadium in a foreign country. Yeah. Ten. Tony Khan is afraid to hand his big stars losses, so he books his big stars conservatively, which is a problem. 11. Tony Khan's rants on Twitter are quite yep. honestly embarrassing, and he seems more like a petulant child crying on the internet because he doesn't get his way. 12. 
Fellow YouTuber and AEW fan, Tranquilo Club, revealed that Tony Khan reached out to him to get booking advice. This is the problem with Tony Khan. 13. Tony Khan. Is that true? Damn. He, yeah, he, he needs an actual booking team that has experience. He, he, it shouldn't just, for the most part, be him. Khan's huge announcements are getting out of hand. Some of the stuff that he announces can just be tweeted out. 14. Tony Khan can't get a hold of his talent. This is seen with the many backstage fights in AEW. Yep, that 15. too. Tony Khan is too nice and wants to be one of the boys so bad. Yep. This results in people taking advantage of him. 16. AEW lied about the all-in Wembley attendance. <laughs> they said that the attendance was over 80,000, while the English government said that the attendance was around 72,000. I mean, that's, that's still a good number. But WWE does this too, so I'm not going to... WWE... Has been doing this for years. They will embellish the actual number. Lately, I don't think they have to because they actually have been selling out. But for a while, they were doing this, especially at WrestleMania. This, So I get why Tony Khan did it because WWE has definitely been doing that. Very WWE move. Yeah. 17. Three shows is way too many shows. Everything besides Dynamite doesn't feel like necessary viewing mm -hmm. besides Collision once in a while. Yep. 18. AEW's crowds are getting emptier by the show. Just this. 19. On top of the empty crowds, the crowds are much quieter in comparison to the AEW between Jeez, 2019 bro. and 2021. 20. AEW tours in the same places constantly and wears off the novelty of AEW in these cities. 21. AEW's ticket prices are quite high considering their product isn't that hot. They've reduced their prices, but it's still a problem. Jeez, 22. Bro. AW ratings have been suffering in 2023, and it's just getting worse. 23. When AEW and NXT went head to head in October of 2023, NXT beat AEW in the ratings. Granted, NXT had a very strong yeah. card with top stars. We know why. It's still embarrassing for AEW. 24. I wouldn't say it's embarrassing because they had to pull out The Undertaker, John Cena, Cody Rhodes, um. I think Oscar was on that show. Paul Heyman. They pulled out a lot of people, so they knew what they were doing. They weren't. They weren't going to beat them. Like that's just not with that type of star power. AEW haven't hit a million viewers on Dynamite since February of 2023, and it doesn't look like that will change for a while. Damn. 25. Battle of the Belts episodes are a flop. Title changes rarely ever happen, and it tanks in the ratings. 26. AEW are moving to monthly pay-per-views, which isn't a bad thing, but mm -hmm. $50 a month for a pay-per-view is outrageous, considering WWE does the same, but for $10 a month. 20 yeah, so, it, uh, I, I am in for AEW having more pay-per-views on a consistent basis, even though they've been doing, like, I think it's like every three months or something like that, but I don't know if people are going to willingly want to pay $50 a month for that, too. 27. <laughs> AEW still don't have a streaming service like that's the WWE hurting them Network, too. Even though Tony Khan has promised it for years. 28. Storylines in AEW are lacking and not good enough. 29. Booking has no continuity. Stars get a push then disappear for weeks mm -hmm. on end, thus diminishing their momentum. 30. Tony Khan booked Kenny Omega vs MJF on three days notice on free TV in front of 3,500 fans and 470,000 viewers on TV. AEW could have made much more money from this match, Yeah. But Tony Khan was booking just to pop a rating. Mm -hmm. 31. The booking of the women's division has been a problem in AEW since day one, and it's Facts. basically the same to this day. 32. The women of AEW don't have enough TV time to tell stories or cut promos, and this affects the division negatively. 33. The women's division has so much drama backstage, there's so much bullying and politicking, and that is detrimental to the division. 34. Tony Khan is afraid to lean into real life. Mm. Vince McMahon would have taken full advantage of the all-in fight with Jack Perry and CM Punk Facts. and would have probably played the footage of the fight on TV and Facts. turned it into a storyline. But instead, Tony Khan just fired his biggest star, CM Punk. Yep. 35. There's too much of a presence of Ring of Honor on AEW TV, considering that a large majority of the AEW fan base doesn't watch ROH. 36. The whole interim champion thing is a mess. 37. The booking of the TNT title has been a mess. Before mm. Christian Cage got the title, the title had diminished in significance. Yeah. 38. Getting rid of the ranking system was a mistake because it progressed storylines and made booking sense. Not even gonna lie to you, the ranking system was actually pretty cool. Uh, I, when they had, were first doing it, I thought it was pretty cool, and then they kind of just went away with it. So I did like the ranking system. 39. 
Tony Khan could benefit from having a creative team or yes. someone qualified to help him with creative in order yes. to add good storylines to matches. 40. Mm. AEW doesn't hold production meetings in fear of things leaking before the show, even though this is a prerequisite to put on a good TV show. And that's why there's so many production issues with AEW on TV when watching live. 41. Wrestling is supposed to be a circus. There's not enough freaks and too many guys in top positions of AEW that look like regular people. 42. There's too many dream matches in AEW and not enough story-driven matches. 43. There's a massive focus on putting on good wrestling matches, which is fair, but it's not the key to growing an audience. 44. There's a lot of fast food wrestling in AEW, filled with insane spots designed to give the viewers a dopamine rush, but it's ultimately forgettable. Yeah. Filet mignon wrestling is what is needed. 45. Yeah. There's no performance center in AEW, and fans can tell. Jesus. There's way too many botches in AEW. 46. The over-reliance on hardcore gimmick matches is a massive problem in AEW, and quite frankly, there's just too much blood. Mm -hmm. 47. John Moxley bleeds way too much. <laughs> Almost every single match he wrestles in, he bleeds. This wears off the novelty and shock factor of blood. 48. Yeah. AEW matches are too unsafe. You have wrestlers flop flying and almost dying just to get a pop from the fans, which is unsustainable in the long run. 49. Due to this dangerous way of wrestling, there have been way too many injuries in AEW, mm -hmm. which hurts the product. 50. The concussion protocol is seriously lacking. You know it's bad when one of your top stars, John Moxley, is calling out the concussion protocol in AEW. 51. Brian Danielson is a major asset in AEW, but he's fragile due to his injury late and past. Mm -hmm. AEW have allowed him to do whatever he wants, and that's why he's had so many injuries in AEW. 52. AEW allowed Brian Danielson to wrestle even though he had two fractured orbital bones, which that's is- That's just, I heard about that too recently. I'm just like, Jesus Christ, bro. Jesus, man, what is going on? <laughs> Unacceptable. 53. Darby Allen takes insane bumps, which is awesome and all, but this sort of recklessness is what could land him in a wheelchair by the time he's 50. Facts. AEW needs to protect wrestlers from themselves. Yes. 54. Even though Darby Allen is injured, he's still allowed to do death-defying stunts elsewhere, and this could seriously hurt him, which could be bad for AEW. Yes. 55. <laughs> AEW even allowed Darby Allen to get a face tattoo. While this is sick on the surface, it ruins all chances for him to become a megastar in AEW. You can't have someone be the biggest star and marketer of your product with a face tattoo. Advertisers won't allow this. Yeah, and that's the thing. Advertisers, they pay the big bucks and they're going to want someone to represent the brand. And you may not agree with it. You know, you can say, oh, well, you know, Hardy had the face paint or whatnot. And that is true. This is very true. <laughs> but I, I think it was easier to market him than it is right now for Darby. Granted, anything can happen. So depending on how they book him and how over he get. You never know, but on surface level, it, it, it definitely is. Uh, it could be a little bit difficult for him to be that main player for a certain company. 56. MJF used to wrestle once or twice a month, but nowadays in AEW, he wrestles four to five times a month. Mm -hmm. This overexposes him and wears the special aura of MJF away. 57. Allowing MJF to hype up his contract ending and him potentially going to WWE is a bad look. It makes AEW look like the Little Leagues. 58. Mm. It's not only MJF who buries AEW publicly, but yep. other wrestlers do this too and it just makes AEW look really bad. Uh -huh. 59. Letting Cody Rhodes go was a big mistake as it left a massive hole in AEW. When Cody Rhodes left, it was the beginning of the end for AEW. Yeah, so and Cody is one of the biggest stars WWE has right now, so... 60. Letting Jade Cargo go was a big mistake, seeing how she's been treated like a superstar in WWE. Tony Khan should have thrown whatever amount of money she wanted so that she could stay. 61. And, and uh, here's the thing about that too, even though they are treating her like this mega star and we haven't seen her wrestle yet. It's just they didn't really have no game plan for her even in AEW. With all those win streaks, it didn't really matter. You know what I'm saying? Like it was just okay. Like it was... They were just padding stats, but it didn't really amount to nothing. And it's going to be very interesting to see what WWE does with her, but they're on the right track of just hyping her up without her actually even wrestling yet. Well, you know, well, us seeing her wrestle yet, so. Not signing Dragon Lee was unfortunate, but it highlights mm -hmm. the problem of AEW giving one-off appearances to talent just to put them on WWE's radar so that they can sign them. Mm -hmm. The same thing happened with Cora Jade. Yeah. 62. It's been reported that the AEW Fight Forever video game took about $40 million to develop. Everyone played the game for a few weeks and yeah. then dropped it because of its issues. It's now on sale for almost half the price it was at the launch date. It looks like the game is a flop and is not profitable. 63. 
the whole WWE diehards versus AEW diehards thing is kind of cringe on both sides. But For the sure. problem with AEW diehards is that the second you criticize the product, it's like you've attacked them personally. Yeah. I know because I used to be like this until I snapped out of it. 64. <laughs> the New Japan you learned. AEW working relationship is one-sided. New Japan gets most of the benefits of their working relationship. 65. Adding the Ring of Honor belt, 19 different wrestlers could have a belt on them at Bro, that, that's too many championships, bro. That's just too many. Too, what did he say? 19? Of working relationship. 65. Adding the Ring of Honor belt, 19 different wrestlers could 19, have a belt on them bro. at any given time in AEW. And that's not even considering all the New Japan belts and the indie belts that wrestlers are allowed to have on TV. Yeah. 66. The tag team division used to be stacked, but now there's just a mid tag team division and a mid trios division. 67. <laughs> this has been a problem since the early days of AEW and persists to this day. There's just too many factions in AEW. 68. Mm -hmm. AEW's booking of Wardlow has been questionable to say the least. <sighs> he could have been a big star, but his For momentum sure. has been thwarted way too many times. Yep. 69. Keith Lee used to be a big star in WWE, but now he's just another guy in AEW. Unfortunately. Seven, Miro could have been a big star in AEW, yep. especially with his Redeemer gimmick, but all the momentum with him has been lost due to poor booking. Yep. 71. Malachi Black could have also been a big star fighting for the TNT title and the world title, but he's been stuck in trio's action for a while, and this is a problem. 72. Buddy Matthews is a killer, but he hasn't reached his potential in AEW nope. due to him being stuck in House of Black. He was better in WWE. 73. Athena is doing some of the best work of her career in Ring of Honor, but she should be on the biggest stage of Dynamite to showcase her talents. 74. I've heard she's been doing good, but they don't feature her on Dynamite like that, so. Andrade has been mishandled in AEW. For he sure. Been one of the biggest <laughs> Latino stars in wrestling, but poor booking has prevented this. 75. Action Andretti scored a big singles win over Chris yep. Jericho, but AEW haven't followed up. They on him, didn't do just nothing guy. with it, bro. 76. Only bring out Abaddon to wrestle on Dynamite once per year around Halloween is ridiculous. Either fire her or feature her more. <laughs> 77. Besides MJF, the rest of the four pillars are playing mainly side piece roles. It mm -hmm. seems like the four pillars are there to hold up all the talent. 78. Watching anything to do with Matt Hardy is quite honestly painful. Get him off our TV screens. 79. Jeff Jarrett should not be featured on AEW as much as he is. He's a relic of the past that should stay in the past. 80. Katsuyori Shibata almost died in the ring a few years ago. There's a reason why New Japan don't allow him to wrestle for them. Something catastrophic could happen to him at any time, but AEW allows him to do whatever he wants. 81. Tony Khan is too afraid to fire wrestlers mm. as he lets their contracts run out. He should be more ruthless in these matters. 82. Instead of firing their biggest star and draw CM Punk, AEW should have instead fired Jack Perry for the All In London Brawl. AEW. I wouldn't have said fire, but there should have been some type of. Well, I mean, they did end up suspending him. I don't know about firing him. I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't know about that. I think they it needed to be. Tony should have definitely mediated this. It shouldn't have happened. It shouldn't have been the thing. The real glass spot that should not have happened. They shouldn't have did it. If they said not to do it, and he still did it. There should have been some repercussions. Suspension. Don't do that shit no more. But Tony Khan just let things implode. So, um. He's a business at the end of the day, and Jack Perry doesn't draw like Punk. 83. AEW lets Stu Grayson go, just to rehire him a few months later, and then let him sit at home and suck money from AEW. Which is this stupid. This is the problem. 84. Wrestlers are allowed to take too much time off from AEW, and this ultimately hurts the product. 85. Referees in AEW are almost non-existent. Facts. They are meant to enforce the rules, but they just let the wrestlers do whatever they yeah, want. Facts. The What's time. the point of having them? <laughs> Aubrey Edwards clearly has main character syndrome. She wants to be the center of attention so bad and get herself over, which is not what a referee is supposed to do. 87. Yeah, it... It, it, <laughs> it, it takes away from the match when she's doing all that extra stuff, so... The anti-Semitic storyline involving Juice Robinson and MJF was tasteless, considering 1,400 Jews were murdered by Hamas prior to that segment. 88. The mm. bad acting in segments is just cringe at times. Yeah. The whole segment with Nick Wayne's mom was not good. 89. Two black men breaking into a white man's house in Virginia and cutting a promo on a baby that's unattended is so unrealistic that it's quite honestly ridiculous. 90. Yeah, that's that just just cringe. The claims are cool, but celebrating the 69th day of a title run is just plain silly. It feels kind of like a bad middle school joke at yeah. this point. Why would this incentivize viewers to tune in? 91. 
Even though their promo went off script and they began shooting, Edge calling Ricky Starks a vanilla midget version of The Rock is just too far. Comments like that can bury a young talent. 92. I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say he was buried, but I get some people's, you know, criticism of mentioning WWE and stuff like that. But I mean, we get it. You know, he's been compared to The Rock, so I get it. I wouldn't go that far. I don't think he was buried, but once again, Ricky Starks isn't as hot or over. Not saying he's not over, but it's like his momentum died down too when they had the opportunity to really capitalize and really push that forward. So Powerhouse Hub's TNT title reign was largely forgettable due to bad booking, but yep. AEW should have went all in on him because he could be a huge star for the future. 93. Excalibur speeding through announcements on commentary <laughs> to the point that he's out of breath was amusing at first, but it just gets a bit ridiculous after a while. Give the man more time. 94. AEW has been in negotiation with Warner Brothers for a couple of months now for a new TV deal, but negotiations have been stalling due to AEW's recent slump. Mm. 95. AEW is not concerned with growing their audience. They are more concerned with pleasing their hardcore fans. Yes. Yeah. 96. AEW have lost the revolutionary feel that they had in the early days of AEW, and it just feels like another wrestling show. 97. AEW are having an identity crisis. Yeah. They used to be like NXT on steroids, but now they are a mix of late stage WCW and mm -hmm. 2010's TNA. I've seen these comparisons. AEW is not the alternative anymore. They are conforming to the WWE way of doing things, and this is hurting them. 99. AEW is just not the same product that we all fell in love with. I'll leave it at that. Thanks for watching this video. If you this is a very interesting video. I'm going to go ahead and give it a like, man, because he said some very uh, interesting things that I have seen AEW hardcore fans that just, and I'm talking about the fans that just only watch AEW. I've seen them give these, these points, these, some of these criticisms to the product. They're not feeling it like they once were. So it's, it's really going to come down to, you know, what they're going to do. How they're going to fix this, how they're going to rectify this, how they're going to grow, you know, the brand. It's it's really up to them to try to figure out some type of way to kind of reverse what's happening right now. It's going to be difficult, but I think first things first, Tony Khan should not really be. He should have an opinion in the creative process and the booking decisions, but he needs to hire people that have experience in doing this and not allow the wrestlers to just do whatever the hell they want you know you're trying to grow a fan base it's cool to have your hardcore fan fan base but you're also trying to grow one and it's kind of hard to do that when you out here allowing wrestlers to wrestle knowing that they shouldn't be wrestling because they need to heal up or allowing them to do crazy stunts that you know they shouldn't be doing because it's not going to help them in the long run i don't know it's, there's a lot of things but it's, it all ultimately starts with tony khan getting things in order and and actually being more so of a boss than a friend to these guys and you know living out his ultimate booking fantasies instead of actually letting people that know how to book and have done it successfully run these shows or you know at least have more input so comment down below let me know how do you guys feel about the state of aew right now are you enjoying the direction it's going in or do you have some of the same similar points that age of wrestling has and many other people have had and feel like it's lost its identity and it's kind of lo losing its uniqueness and it, it's it's declining in quality for some of you guys let me know down below but i appreciate all the love and support you guys shown on the channel road to 150k and i'm still going to speed the youtube wrestling champ world appreciate y'all kicking me see y'all next one peace